to introduce you in the method we know as gel electrophoresis, the art of evaluating DNA, RNA, and proteins. Okay, first of all, what is gel electrophoresis? Well, gel electrophoresis is a group of methods used to study DNA, RNA, and proteins dep depending on size and charge for DNA, RNA, and size for proteins. There are two types of gel electrophoresis, SDS and agros. Okay, before we get into in that, we'll go into the history of electrophoresis. I was the one to have written about gel electrophoresis in about the 1800s, but English scientist Oliver Smithies is known to making grand changes in the field and is credited with most of the discoveries in gel electrophoresis. He called it the unique separatory power. Okay, tell it, oh, tell it to freezes. The process uses electrical charge to break DNA and RNA, size and charge, or just size for the process. There are two gel for each gel electrophoresis. Agros gel electrophoresis, they use an gel. RNA. At SDS page electrophoresis, they use part of the gel. Agarose gel. First, you take 1% of agarose solution and mix it in with the gel matrix. But if you're using a small sample, use only up to 2% of agarose solution. Then you boil it into your standard microwave, standard microwave, and then you let the solution cool in room temperature, about 60 degrees Celsius after it's done. And you should watch out that it doesn't overflow in the microwave. Okay, then you add ethidium bromide, about one milliliter of ethidium bromide per 10 milliliters of gel solution. The ethidium bromide is very important because it gives the gel its color later on when you analyze it under UV, UV light. Then you stir it all together and then you put the cones in, five to 10 millimeters from the base of the gel. You should not forget the cones because without the cones you can't make the wells and the wells you need to put in your samples to investigate. You should also be careful with the ethidium bromide because it's a carcinogen and it could cause you cancer if you're exposed to it, even through inhalation or contact. And again, don't forget the cold. Parliacrylamide gel. There are two types of gel in the parliacrylamide gel. There's a stacking gel and a running gel. It's, it's made of polymerized gel, so it's basically a polymer gel and uh, it, in the resolving gels, are made with in, in the stacking gel. It's made in 6%, 10%, 12%, or 18%. And the percentage depends upon the salt, concentra salt concentration you have in the stacking gel. The more salt concentration you have, the clearer your bands will be. And stacking gel is up to 5%. Add it into each gel, and then the wells are created. The percentage chosen depends on the smallest size of the protein that one wishes to identify and investigate for the probe of the sample. The smaller the percentage, I mean, the smaller it is, the bigger the percentage you want to use because it will make it clear in the running gel. And polycrimalite gel is also bought because arkylamide is one, one part of the gel and arkylamide is also a very dangerous substance. It could cause you cancer and it could get you really sick. So it's usually bought by a, an, a scientist because it saves time and it's also safe. Okay. Loading the agros gel. You place the gel into the gel electrophoresis apparatus and you load the DNA samples into the wells. And you must be careful not to poke the gel because if you poke the gel, the samples will just go all over the place. And then you run the gel at such and such voltage, usually 100 volts that we did in our experiment. And so the apparatus is also horizontal, unlike that in the SDS, which is vertical, and you'll see that later on. Okay, loading SDS, as you can see, it's also vertical. So when you load the gel, you place the samples into the, into the wells, which you can't see right now, but there, you put them on the top very slowly, and again, you make sure not to poke the gel, because if you do, the samples will go all over the place. Uh, so this is a gel electrophysis is used for DNA and RNA and uses electrical charge to separate the nucleic acid molecules. This is an aggregate gel made from a wet resin. Okay, and agro 
those kind of tricks. Basically, certain molecules move faster and farther than other ones. Ethereum bromide has before, binds DNA, and when to be light, it, it, it shines. The ethereum molecules are excited, and so they shine out. The photograph of the gel is taken. And so, this is more analysis. So, you have lane 1, lane 3, lane 5, and lane 7. These are all markers. These are controlled samples of base pair, as you can see, it's a BP base pair, that you would use to compare your samples, which are in lane 2, 4, 6, and 8. So the smaller molecules, again, are at the bottom, and the bigger molecules are at the top, since they move the least. And so the way these markers would be used is that, let's say that you have to find the size of this one. So you see it's between the 300 marker and the 200 marker. So you would have to guess it would be about about 250 base pairs. So it's ba the markers are basically used to estimate the size of a sample. Okay, errors dealing with agarose electrophoresis. The conformation or shape of a molecule can cause its migration to vary. To avoid, you, you should use separate, use separate linear molecules using DNA PCR products or res restriction digester. So, an example is that you have is when you have you have super coils, which is all like in a little circle, so it's all huddled up, and it moves faster for their gel since there's like no space within it. And you have linear, which is just basically like a line, linear linear strands of DNA, and then you have nickel nickel circle, which is basically it's one side is closed and the other one is open, and so. According to that, uh, according to my diagram, nickel circles move slower in the gel and would stay on the top. Linear would move second, and the supercoiled moves deeper and faster into the gel. And voltage could also affect gel electrophoresis because if you use too much voltage, the samples could run off the gel. So it's recommended to use five volts per centimeter of gel. Agarose, co as agarose concentration can also affect the, the movement of the molecules. So as you can see, these are these are the molecules in different agarose concentrations. So in point seven, you can see that they're not really separated. So it's not really well good to use 0.7% of the solution. But as you can see, 1% is really accurate. But then when you use too much of it, the there is too thick, the shell is too thick, and the molecules can't move through it. So you're really close and that'll mess up your results. So these factors can't be And the I